Okay, Thomas and I decided we'll give you part two of the same lecture on uh, my safety. Um, when we were talking a little bit about the chainsaw, my brother one time wanted to borrow my chainsaw, and in those days I was new at this, and I said, oh, sure, and I showed him how to use it. He come by and he, whoa, my lucky, showed me his pants, they're all cut up. He just missed my leg. And uh, from then on, I learned, I never lend my chainsaws out. If you need to do some work, and you're my friend, I will come, I'll do the cutting with my chainsaw as a favor, or if you want to pay me, but I don't lend my saw. I don't want my saw to cut your fingers, your legs, or whatever, okay? So bear that in mind, too, you know. Uh, you could feel real bad if you lent out a saw and somebody ended up dead. Uh, another time, my friend Don, he's one of our students here when I was in college, and he was uh, working at the cemetery, doing a little bit of tree work, and he was almost done, and he had one branch, and he reached up at the chainsaw like this, and he cut the branch, but he wasn't paying attention the way the branch went. It came down and hit him in the head, and with that he fell down, the finger was still on the chainsaw, and it cut a hole in his leg. And some peachy knee guys were working nearby, they came over, put a tourniquet on it, brought him to the hospital, and he, he was fine. But if he was there by himself, that might have been the end. Could have bled to that, you know. So, another thing is, always have a partner. Whenever you're using equipment, power equipment, especially, like I say, you cut yourself with your with pruners and stuff, it is dangerous, but any electric or power equipment, you can do real damage to yourself. And if you're by yourself, there's no help coming. Okay. I have a list of things here, too. And, uh, oh yeah, I, I forgot the one part that was very important. Because it, it's kind of grotesque, but you're not looking at it. And uh, it was Robert, myself, one of our employees, and Robert's girlfriend, Diana. And Diana and his other employee were down in the back, down a couple terraces, down trimming a hedge. And Robert was up in his tree, and by this time I'm not working much, I'm hauling brush or nothing. And you know, all of a sudden I hear Robert, you know, oh no! And he comes, instead of walking down the ladder, he slid down the ladder. And then what happens? He says, oh, so and so got his fingers caught in the electric shears. Holy crap. So he runs down, and the next thing I hear, here he comes up. I need the toolbox. So-and-so's got his fingers still stuck in the shears. And he says, I'm going to take the shears apart, because the, the, the shears are one blade on top of the other, and they're with teeth, and in between these is where the fingers were. So I said, real bad? He said, yeah. I said, okay, I'll get the truck ready. And I called, we were real close to Davies Hospital, and my wife used to work there. And so I called them up, and I said, we're coming in, we'll be here within 10 minutes. And so uh, Robert is coming up, and the client comes out with a towel, wraps up this guy's hand, and he hops in the Suburban with me, and I drive him down, we bring him in, and as they're checking out, getting all the information, I said, is doc any of the Dr. Bunkies here? They're the ones that do reattachments. The, the father my wife worked with, he was the first person to ever reattach fingers, possibly in the world, and then taught all her sons and a lot of other doctors. He says, yeah, uh, Greg is here. And I said, well, can you contact them? I think we're, you're going to need them. So with that, they took my employee away, and they said, you can go. And he'll be here for a while. And so I called his mom, 
and she came to pick him up later and he called me uh, that night and he says, oh, they saved the fingers. One of them was dangling just by the skin and uh, the other one was just mashed, you know. And eventually he said they all work and he says a little bit of feeling is gone in the tips. But, you know, luckily, but he said what I'm getting at to show you how simple this is, if you know what electric shears are, he was sweeping like this, and then he was cleaning it out like this, and a lot of times people get in, and I said, did you do that? He said, no. He said, when I was through, I, I just, I thought they were off, and they still go chick, 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 and with that last chick, chick, my, my hand was there. Mm. And so anyway, poor Diana, she's the one that saw it first, she almost, was the one passing out. Robert did his thing, took all the bolts out, took the pieces apart. And so anyway, the other part is knowing what to do in a crisis. And we were here in this room, uh, and Robert told this story to our gardener members. And one of our uh, members says, oh, Robert, you should have called 911. Robert said, I got, I got the shears off of him and got him to the hospital in 15 minutes. He said, it takes 10 minutes to get the firemen out there. And then they have to go down into the yard and I know what they would do. They would put his arm out like that and they put a board on it and they tape the shears and everything together to let the doctor take it apart. That's how they do stuff. He said, I knew what I'm doing. I didn't hurt him by taking him apart. And I got him there so quick. So I'm not saying you should do that all the time, but that's what I always tell you in my classes. I'm telling you what to do. Thomas does, the book does, the uh, Red Cross does. But you run all that information in your own brain. Figure out the best course of action and then go on. But that's the best way to do it. Don't just take any of, you know, because maybe your way is quicker, okay? So you gotta make that, that choice. Um, and then I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, a chainsaw. We had a, one of the tree men from uh, DPW. Uh, he had been a Green Beret, he had been a smoke jumper, for the forestry department. He went to Balboa High School, City College, before he did all that. And he had been the, the foreman for I don't know how many years. And they're up at Laguna Honda. He's making a cut, and the guy down and saw bounce back and clip him. I would never think that this would happen to this guy who I called an expert. But to show you, I don't care who you are, in your life, there's one chance out of a million that you can get it. But if your time is up, it'll get you. So be oh, never be complacent. Be whenever you're doing these kind of jobs. I don't want to see you listening to music and have your earphones on. I want you to be right there. I don't want you to be out surfing in your head and using a chainsaw. Mm -hmm or having a good time somewhere. Be current, be right there. It's so important. I see students out here a lot of time mowing the lawn, and having a good time. You can run over a sprinkler, it's not gonna hurt anybody, but now you're gonna have to do a plumbing job. So you may hit nails, it'll throw them. You don't know what's on a rock. I've taken with the power edger, I picked it up, and busted a window. I broke a window in a house, I broke one in a car. You know, so you try and watch what, what you're doing, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got. Oh, the last part was chippers. We got a few minutes, Thomas? Yes, sir. Good. Um, you probably have seen chippers at work when, where they put trees in and branches and everything. And they have two kinds. One's a disc chipper, it's a great big disc, and it, it chips the wood. And then they have a drum, it's about like this, 
about this big around. And then you could hear those sing. And when, when the wood goes through like a planer. And all I can tell you, we had a gentleman here demonstrating our new tractor. And he said, yeah, we were talking about the chipper. He said, up in the valley, somebody went through a chipper last week. So what happened, people hold on to it. Their clothes get caught on it or something. So what I want you to learn, if this is the throat, and you're throwing it in this way, you stand here, you stand here. You're never going to go in. Don't stand it here like you see some so-called expert and they're pushing the wood in. It could pull you in so easily. So you always, I was taught this by an old timer and I've never had a problem. One of our employees and he worked for the city got hurt. He was over here but wasn't watching. He put in, what do you call them? Dog ears or something. The branch came out and then had a piece off to the side. And when he went to push it, that piece spun up. It didn't pull him in, but it hit him in the head and shoulder, almost broke his shoulder. So, you know, if you have such a piece of wood, cut the end off before you throw it in. You don't put something that could, also a big piece that's behind you, it could pull you in. So, uh, if you ever go to work for somebody, they usually tell you all this stuff. Because usually when you're a new on a crew, uh, tree job crew, you don't get to feed the chipper, you get the haul brush. You get to send the gasoline in, into, the, into the tools and send them up to the climber. Once you can haul brush enough, then they'll start to teach you how to feed it. So keep that in mind, goggles, helmet, earmuffs, gloves, all the protective gear you can have. Okay, I hope safety stays in your mind. See you later.